Okay, so we'll talk about the Stone's formula in section 13.4. Uh, the textbook divides the series basically as syntactic series for the gamma function for large argument, which is a very nice derivation. But I'll, I'll divide it uh, using actually the uh, the other method presented uh, in the textbook. Uh, Section 12.7, the so-called stiffness descent method, also or the saddle point, saddle point method. Um, so uh, at least for the first few terms, would have for most purposes uh, enough uh, to use the stone formula. So the the derivation start with the integral representation of the. the Gamma function that is uh, in section one that is um, equation thirteen point five. So we start with, start with that. So gamma z is is integral so infinity. E to the minus t, t to the z minus one, dt. Okay, so we'll start with that. And in fact, we actually shift the arguments. So instead of z, we'll use z plus one. So that basically gets rid of this z to t to the z. Okay. Uh, that's the starting point, and and basically now we are consider the case that uh, uh, z is large, okay, and uh, and we at 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 this moment we will we'll assume z a, a real z and z is positive, but then uh, after you divide the formula, you can actually apply it to other uh, cases uh, with like a uh, complex thing that 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 be fine. So we um, to use the whatever in uh, the formula in section twelve point seven. We'll put this integral in the form that uh, that is uh, applicable to this section. And to do that, we do a uh, change of variable, so it basically like uh, t becomes a z times rho, is using another variable, rho, so that the uh, gt is z rho. Okay, so uh, with that. So one of z plus one will be equals to the uh, because it's assuming z is positive, so uh, rho is have the same limit, so c also c c to infinity, and you have the e to the minus z times rho. Is this one and t is z rho to the z power, and the factor z to the z you can take that out from the integral because that doesn't depend on rho to the z, and then you have rho uh, rho to the z, and then dt is z times u, and another z here you put this in outside also. Z plus one, and then zero. Okay. And now the idea is uh, to make this the integram a, a single exponential function. And what you need to do is like uh, rho is exponential of log rho, right? So it becomes exponential log rho times z. So both have a z factor in front of right, like that. 
uh, you can write it in this in a single exponential function. So write in the line of that, or you can divide this this factor is uh, that's involved in the integral. You can divide that. Plus one that equals to infinity exponential function of z. For this one, you have log rho. And this one, you have minus rho. Okay, and we are considering considering the case z is large. You have large magnitude of z. So uh, this is an exponential function, and you have a large argument multiplied by this function of rho, and we'll call that uh, we'll call this f of rho. This argument that multiplied by z, this function is um, a function of rho. We call f f rho, and because z is large. So uh, that uh, this integral will be dominating at the, the row value around f, uh, the maximum of f. Because when it's for maximum, a little bit on either side, that the integral will be much smaller than the, the value at the maximum. OK, so uh, that uh, is uh, what this Stiffest descent or set of point method is about. Okay, so uh, what we need to do is to find the maximum of L. So the maximum of L is, uh, is given by the F prime is zero, so F prime zero is one over rho minus one. That's set to zero. So the f is maximum at uh, rho equals to rho max equals to one. So that becomes a maximum. And f of uh, rho maximum would be, you know, the f is this one. So log one is zero. So it would be minus one. So the maximum is minus one. And then uh, because the integral is dominating by rho that is around the rho maximum, so we can, uh, around this maximum point, we can uh, approximate f with uh, its uh, Taylor expansion. So f rho would be approximately F rho maximum, which is minus one, and then plus the linear order F pi at rho maximum, and multiplied by rho minus rho max, but where F pi is exactly zero, so uh, the second order is one half F double pi rho max, and rho minus rho max. Well, so F prime is this one, F double prime, F double prime is just minus one over rho square. And rho is, rho max is one, so F double prime at rho max is minus one. So this is approximately, this is equals to minus one. Oops. And this is minus one minus, and this is one minus one. One max is one, so one minus one square root two. Okay, so that is f uh, around one max. Okay, and we can we can substitute this into that. Okay, and the physical picture is like that. So the or schematic. Schematically, so you have a row here and integrate zero to infinity. Okay, and the integral is maximum at uh, row equals to row max. 
equals to one. And the integral is e to the f rho f as a function of rho and, uh, at uh, f maximum is at t minus one, so e to the minus one. So this is the integral. And then it's fall off very quickly at e psi equals to e psi. This is e to the minus one. E to the c to the minus one. And like c times f, f, f is minus one. So this is very large. I mean, z is very large, and then the, the, if you deviate from this a little bit, then uh, it will be much smaller than this one. Okay, so um, so that's the that's this integral. All right. So now uh, this integral is approximately infinity. You have the minus one. Minus C, E, and the minus C over T, rho minus one. Okay, so that is uh, this one. And this integral, so the first factor you can take that out. And this is like a Gaussian integral. It's all, only integrating a little bit uh, before rho equals one and a little bit after rho equals one. And then you already covered the whole range of the in, integra integration that you need to get uh, like a Gaussian integral. So you can say, we define this rho minus one as a new way of rho, so it's like rho two. So this is like, uh, The e to minus e l integrate e to the minus z cubed square cubed. And the limit is actually from a little bit before that to a little bit after that, so a little bit negative, a little bit positive, but it's already covered the whole range of a thousand integral. You could effectively say this minus infinity infinity because z is very large. And so this is just a Gaussian integral. And the value would be the square root two over z multiplied by square root pi. So this is equal to so we have this e to the minus c square root of d two over z. Right. Again, assuming z is positive for this for this formula. Okay. And now that would be about the end of that so consideration in this. So we can combine this to that so down here. C plus one would be approximately Z C plus one multiply this to the right hand side. And then you have uh, and then you have a square of z here, so you can divide that to so this is z plus one half. And then you have a uh, constant two pi, square root of two pi e to the minus. Okay, so that would be uh, that would be the equation below 13.60. Down to z plus one square of two pi and z to the z plus one half e to the minus z. So that's this formula. So now, alternatively, you can take the log of that. So the log of that. Approximately. So you have a few different terms. You have this uh, z plus one half times log z. And this one will give you just minus c. And this constant term is just log square of two pi. Or if you like, you can put the square of this square root out in one half. Like that, but that, that doesn't matter. 
I mean, obviously, the, the full asymptotic series, you have other terms, you have other terms here. And you, you compare with a 13.6D, all the other terms are uh, at least 1 over Z. There is a power of 1 over Z. So there's a series of uh, uh, power of 1 over Z. So uh, in most purpose, you can ignore everything because if Z is large, everything else is uh, everything else is small. It's the only non-small thing is uh, there's a constant, and then there's something that performs in log C. This term performs log C, and then there's a uh, another term performs in Z, and the largest term will be performs in Z times log C. So you keep the log the large term for the stirring formula. So the largest term is Z times log C followed by Z or minus Z and followed by one half. Log Z, and then followed by a constant term. Everything else uh, is small. Okay, so that is uh, basically all the terms in 13.60 that are not including all the inverse power of C term here. So that would be another way to divide the same formula. Uh, 